Hi everybody, this is a short handheld uh, update. Uh, I hope this works. Um, just to share with you this, I'm now working on the I.O. processor of Talus, which will be an At Atmega 1284P that you see here. Um, this is basically a microcontroller like, like the usual Arduino 328P, but um, it has more memory, 128 kilobytes of flash, I think, uh, and a lot more pins, which for Talus is important. The role of this thing in Talos will be to be the interface between the Talos CPU, which we have been uh, building, um, and uh, a terminal. And as terminal, I am using this TTGO VGA32. Uh, this is actually the circuit board. It operates at uh, 3.3 volts. It uses an Arduino module, as you see here, sorry, an Arduino, an ESP32 module. It's very similar to the terminal in Agon, Agon Lite, uh, but they use a whole module, not only the core, and they, they have some more stuff in here. Um, but it basically plays the role of a non-C terminal, a VT100, something like this, a serial terminal, connects to VGA on one side, and that's what you see over there. That's the output. I call it Talos ES UNC Serial Terminal. Uh, it, uh, it has a certain resolution that you can see there, 80 columns, um, RX, TX, and uh, CTS, RTS flow control. I'm running it right now at a very low speed, uh, 19,200 baud. Um, but this is just for testing. It also has a little connector for a keyboard and I'm using my trusty MacSite uh, USB PS2 compatible keyboard. It needs to be PS2 compatible. Uh, what else do you see here? This is an external four pin strong oscillator, 16 megahertz. I plan to use 18.432 megahertz. So the baud rates uh, are, are lined up with the clock frequency uh, and here there is a 74125. Uh, uh, this is a buffer, but I am using it as a level shifter from 5 volts, which is the voltage domain of the Atmega, to 3.3 volts, which is the voltage domain of the, the TTGO VGA32. Uh, that's why I'm also using this linear regulator here. It's a low dropout regulator, goes from 5 to 3.3 volts. Uh, there is a decoupling cap over there. There is a bigger decoupling cap here. Some tiny bypass capacitors on the power rails. Uh, and there is just an LED with an in-series current limiting resistor. This is just for testing. And here I have an FTDI uh, adapter to serially program the flash memory of the Atmega 1284P. That's what's going on here. Yeah, and uh, th there is one thing I, I, I should mention. Uh, these Atmega 1284Ps, um, they come from factory with the fuses programmed uh, in such a way that it assumes that you're going to use the internal oscillator of, um, I believe, 8 megahertz it has inside, or, or an external crystal with capacitors. Um, I don't want to do that because the clock signal for this I.O. controller will be also shared with the CPU. So I want to use an external strong 4-pin oscillator that feeds into the Crystal 1 uh, input um, of this. But to be able to use a 4-pin oscillator, uh, we have to change the fuses. And um, I basically used a little Arduino Uno as a programmer. Uh, and then you can take the oscillator and the microcontroller and put them on this little breadboard here um, and burn uh, a new uh, bootloader. And uh, when you burn the new bootloader on the microcontroller when it's here, uh, you can set uh, the fuses. Basically, you have to set the low fuses, the low nibble to, to zero, uh, all four bits zero. So it uses an external oscillator. And after you've done it here on this board with a little Arduino Uno, then you can remove it from this breadboard uh, and put it in there. Um, 
and here on my screen that's the little Arduino sketch that I'm using in the 1284P. Uh, it basically you know, defines some pins as part of the serial communication with the terminal, which in this case is the TTGO VGA32. Uh, it uses some flow control, CTS, RTS. Um, then here I just declare the pins, what's an input, what's an output, and I wait for the serial protocol to start at 19,200 baud. And then I just implement the, 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 the hardware control flow byte by byte, which is possible to do. I write to the uh, a request to send pin low and it's an active low. So basically this is a request for the terminal to send data to Talos. And that data being, you know, keyboard uh, key presses. Um, if there is data already available coming from the terminal, then we tell the terminal, okay, don't send data for now until I process what I just received from you. And for as long as there is data in the buffer uh, of data coming from the terminal, uh, we read that out in a byte. The in byte is just a byte of data. Um, and then we wait uh, while the terminal is not ready. CTS is active low and that means uh, um, clear to send. It's an input to Talos. Uh, when that input is uh, low, that means the terminal is ready to receive more data. Uh, but if it's high, uh, we will get stuck in this while loop for as long as it's high, basically meaning we will wait until the terminal is ready to send data. And once it is ready, then we just send the same byte we received, we send it back to the terminal, basically echoing uh, 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 the data that the user presses on the keyboard. So if I go to the keyboard now, and I just type nonsense, it echoes back um, to the terminal uh, the data it has uh, received. That's basically, that's basically where I am uh, right now. Um, for the TTGO terminal emulator, we actually only need uh, RX and TX. We don't need anything else but I want to make Talos compatible with uh, retro terminals, old fashioned uh, ANSI terminals like the VT100 and uh, uh, dozens of others. I have a little collection of old terminals. That's why I added the other lines. Even if we don't really use it, I am using it, except one of them, VTR, I'm not using. Um, but I want to make sure that Talos is ready uh, to allow people to maybe by changing the sketch uh, to interface to any classical terminal um, as well. So that's basically it. What's coming next is uh, I'm going to have the Atmega 1284, which is basically the I.O. processor of Talos. I will call it the I.O. processor. I will have it talk to a micro SD card adapter that I will add somewhere here. And then I have to add uh, two memories uh, somewhere over here. Uh, one will play the role of instruction memory for Talos and the other one the, the system memory for Talos and the I.O. controller will re be responsible for, for, for instance, loading uh, programs from the micro SD card adapter, which will be somewhere here, uh, and uploading it to instruction memory somewhere here. And doing the same with data memory. Uh, so we have a DMA uh, controller there. Uh, that can communicate from uh, the terminal to the Talos CPU via the I.O. controller by loading stuff into the system memory of Talos and manipulating the incoming and outgoing mail flags that we've discussed in previous episodes. So once I have the micro SD card adapter and the two memories plus the buffers that I will need to interface because I don't have enough pins for everything, so I'll have to implement some multiplexing via tri-state buffers once I have all of that working uh, on the breadboard, I will prepare uh, another update. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.